Ephesians chapter 3. Verse 14 down through 21. For this reason I bow my knees before the Father from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. That according to the riches of his glory he may grant to you be strength, strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. He wants to strengthen your inner being, your inner man, your inner woman, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. So in other words, if, 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 if he strengthens you in the inner man, then your faith grows as Christ dwells in your heart, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all you ask or think according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Now, it's very evident by reading this that God, not just this, but the entire Bible, that God wants you and I to have a relationship. You say, I don't feel as close to God as I used to be. Well, let me tell you this. There was this guy named George. He was married to Ethel. And George and Ethel had been married for over 50 years. They'd celebrated their silver anniversary. And one day they were driving down the road, and as they were driving down the road, they happened to see this young couple, you know, in their 20s. I mean, it was almost like the, the little girl was sitting on his lap as they were driving down the road. They were so close. And Ethel said, George, look at that little couple over there. Isn't that beautiful? He said, it sure is. Kept driving. Said, you know, we used to sit that close too. And George said, yeah, I remember that. And then he looked at Ethel and said, but I haven't moved. He's still driving. Amen. So if you're not as close to God as you want to be or used to be or think you should be, I want to tell you, God hasn't moved anywhere. God's right where he always has been, and he won't change, and he will be. Now, this is a gospel truth that God wants you to experience him. Now, that's a fact. Now, I, that's why I'm so, so, uh, what can I say, emotional, I guess, when it comes to worshiping God. I'm a very emotional person when it comes to praising and it comes to preaching and it comes to talking about the Lord. I can get pretty excited about talking about the Lord. You know why I get excited? Because I experienced the reality of the relationship of God and I want everybody to know about it, okay? And everywhere I go, I talk about it and it I, I, doesn't make me some or some super evangelist or anything like that. I just want to tell everybody that I was a beggar that needed bread. And guess what? I'm still a beggar. I still need bread. And all you other beggars, come on. I know where the bread is. He's the living bread. And he wants us to experience him. He don't want it just to be a religion. Now, I grew up in religion. I don't know about you, but I grew up in religion. I did the sign of the cross every time I dipped my hand in the holy water. I say, what's that all about? It's not important. It's about nothing. Amen. I went to a Catholic church up in New York City just to view and look at the beautiful thing. I walked in, me and my son, and I put my fingers in. Just for old time's sake. Amen. Just did it for old time's sake. Didn't mean anything. I went through the rituals of religion. I lit candles. I never prayed the rosary, but I... My grandmother did a lot for me. And so I know what religion is. But let me tell you something. It's not about lighting candles. It's not about do, saying the rosary. It's not about having a prayer wheel. You know what a prayer wheel is? It's what the Buddhists do. They put it, got a prayer wheel, and they just zzzz, 
and that's prayers to Buddha or whoever. I don't know. But a lot of people just like that in the church just pray the same thing, just won't you get your prayer wheel you just you never pray out of your heart uh, you just just put it up there and say lord you know what i need and what i want uh, yeah, let me tell you something that's just religion religion uh, is coming to church and leaving the same way that you come and, and, and religion is singing the songs and never thinking about what you're singing uh, religion is sitting and listening to a preacher uh, and putting down your grocery list as we go uh, or looking at your facebook uh, but let me tell you something uh, it is a fact and it is a bible truth uh, that God wants you to experience him uh, not in a scientific way not in a textbook way not in a way that you can learn mathematics uh, you can experience God in a very very personal way uh, because Jesus Christ is a personal savior uh, and you know what he deals with us all in a very personal way uh, and if you've never been dealt by with God it means uh, that you've never drawn near to God because God said if you'll draw near to me I'll draw near to you but you got to take the first step uh, you got to take the first uh, liberty uh, and walk towards him and I guarantee you uh, if you'll seek him he said you'll find him uh, because he wants you to experience him aren't you glad God's not like they say the deist I don't know if you know what a deist is a deist is someone that believes that God created everything. Now, they, they believe in creation of God, and then they believe that God kind of wound everything up and walked away from it. And once he walked away from it, he doesn't, he doesn't have any more fellowship. He doesn't have any more uh, dealings with man. He just lets it go as it goes. Let it go. And then at the end, it's going to wind down, and he's going to come back. That's not how it works. Uh, God was in the beginning. God's in the middle, and God will be at the end. Somebody say amen. Uh, you read this Bible. God God wants to have a relationship with every individual in this house. Uh, you read it, and as you read it, uh, you'll find the example, example after example. God's not a deist. Uh, God's not a God that just wound things up. Uh, he walked with Adam and Eve in the garden. Uh, he met with, with Isaiah in the temple. Uh, he met with Ezekiel on a valley of dead, dry bones. Uh, he met with Paul and Silas uh, in the middle of a jail. Uh, he met with, uh, with John uh, on the Isle of Patmos. What did he say? Uh, he said, I was on the Isle of Patmos for preaching the word of of God uh, and they put me out here uh, I was by myself and all alone uh, but all of a sudden on a Sunday morning uh, on early Sunday morning uh, he said on the Lord's day the Lord showed up uh, and he gave me a strength uh, as though he was blowing a trumpet uh, I seen the Lord hallelujah I'm a whole lot more excited than you are but that's all right I'm used to it <laughs> glory to God See, 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 we, we've got this idea that church or, or being the church or, or, or having a relationship with God is just in church. Mentioned last week, I'm going to put my Jesus on. Well, not, not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a supernatural encounter of the God kind where when you get up, you know you've been changed. When like, when like Jacob, uh, you've wrestled with the Lord all night long and, and you've prayed and you've sought God and you said, I'm not let go till you bless me. Uh, and God said, I'll bless you. Uh, yeah, he blesses you. But guess what? The Bible said that God touched him in his hip. Uh, and so for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. Uh, but you know what? He wasn't discouraged because that limp, that limp proved to everybody uh, that he had been touched with God. Uh, and now every one of us, God will prove himself to us uh, if we will seek him. Uh, he's not some some mind of imagination uh, he's not just something that somebody came up with uh, that makes a good story uh, he is a living God uh, he's the God of Abraham Isaac and Jacob uh, he's not a God of the dead uh, he's a God of the living uh, and if you want to live an experience with God uh, God will meet you right there somebody say amen oh now let me ask you something are you empty are you empty? You say, man, I've, I've done everything. I've tried everything. I, I just, is there something missing in your life? <laughs> you know, people try pills. People try drugs. People try sex. People try money, parties. People try carnal relationships. And maybe you know the Bible. You know, I've met a lot of people think they know the Bible. <laughs> Key word is think. <laughs> It's not enough just to know what the words are. 
The Bible says that the carnal man can't really understand the Word of God, okay? Oh, you can, re- you can get down and, and, and get a doctorate degree in, in, in religion, and you can, you know, understand the words that are on the page. But it's another thing when you've experienced the words on the page, when it's not just black letters on white pages, but it's the living Word of the living God. The Bible's quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It pierces the dividing of sun of soul and spirit uh, of joints and marrow uh, is it is of the thoughts the intents of the heart uh, what's it saying it's alive my friend uh, it's not a dead book uh, it's not a book of antiquity uh, it is a living live contemporary book uh, and if we get in it uh, it'll change us uh, and you'll never get out of it but you'll never get anything out of it till you get in it Oh, God, help us to have a relationship with God that all hell cannot break. Uh, That's what he was saying in our scripture text this morning. uh, Because you're going to have some bad times. You're going to have some tough times. You're going to have some times when you don't know which way is up. uh, And you're not going to know what to say. You're not going to know what to do. uh, But it's in those times that your inner man uh, is strengthened. uh, It's a foundation. uh, It's an anchor in the middle of a storm. uh, And it'll hold you steady. uh, It'll hold you right. Right there where you need to be all the time uh, because God is a God of relationships. He wants to have a relationship with you. I want to have a relationship with this drink of water up here. Amen. I could look at it all day and say, man, that looks good. Man, that is something else, isn't it? Y'all see my water? Man, I tell you what, it's wet. That's all right. Ooh, and it's cold. And Sister Cindy's blessed because she always has me one. Even when she's gone. Don't know how she does it, but she's gone and she still gets me one. She's here today, though. Thank you. I want to experience it. Mm. Boy, I'm going to tell you something right now. If you had never experienced that, you've never experienced it. You've never experienced anything. Baby, that's not a Coke. That's not Dr. Pepper. That's not even cold mi- milk. It's not even buttermilk. It's water. Cool, cool water. Real water. Filtered water. Purified Reverse osmosis. What? Whatever that means. Amen. I'm liking it, though. The Bible said, taste the Lord and see that he is good. You see, you can look at God all day long. You can come to church and watch people, you know, worship God. And you can sing the same songs and hear the same sermon uh, and go through the same things that everybody else does. But it makes a difference uh, when you taste the Lord and see that he is good. Uh, when you just get the Lord uh, and say, Lord, I need you more than anything. I'm empty. Uh, he said that out of your belly shall flow rivers uh, of living water. Uh, you can't have that in- unless you have an experience with him. Oh, yeah, i got to get me another drink then. If y'all ain't going to amen me, I'm just going to drink myself to death up here. Amen. Amen. Oh, taste the Lord and see that he's good. I come to tell you, you've got the answer right here in the word of God. It's not found in a bottle. It's not found in a pill bottle or a liquor bottle. It's found in the Bible. It's found in the word of the living God. For the word of God is the only thing. Change the life of a human being. Uh, you can't counsel it out. Uh, you can't have enough t- debate. Uh, you can't have enough argument. Uh, if you experience God, it'll change you. Look at the Apostle Paul. There was a man that could argue with you till the sun came, uh, went down, uh, till the cows came home. Uh, he knew the law backwards and forwards. He knew everything about it. Uh, there was nothing. He was a genius when it came to it. Uh, but it wasn't until he met Jesus uh, on the road to D- Damascus uh, that That was when he understood, uh, it's not what I know, it's what I've experienced. Uh, He experienced a relationship with God that day, uh, and it changed his life for time uh, and eternity, and he's also changed ours. 
Because God saved him. Guess what? He wrote the book of Ephesians, and that's what we're preaching out of the day. <laughs> oh, yeah. You see, you can have an experience with God beyond your wildest imaginations. I'm not talking about some stupid, crazy, fanatical thing that people got going on today. Don't, don't fall for that stuff. You, I don't even want to get on it because you think I'm hobby horsing again. And I am. Amen. And I, after I put that up here, I thought, man, I should have changed colors on that because I, pre you know, it's fake gold dust stuff they're talking about in these churches. That ain't true. That ain't gold dust, okay? That's just a picture. All these little things that they say is the presence of God. No, the presence of God is, man, I tell you, is when you get down all alone till you're not alone anymore. And has anybody ever been there? Anybody ever got down on their knees and said, God, I'm here. Uh, and Lord, I need you. Uh, not that I need a healing. Not that I need this. Not that I need that. God, I need you. Uh, I need your presence. Uh, I need your power. Uh, I need to know you in the power of your resurrection. Uh, brother, he'll show up. I promise you that. Uh, God will show up. Uh, Isaiah in the temple. Uh, he said, I'm going in that temple. Uh, and, the, and the old priest probably said, what are you do doing going in the temple? It's not the Sabbath. Uh, he said, I don't care if it's not the Sabbath. Uh, I'm going in there all my life. I've heard you tell the, t stir the stirring tales uh, of how God delivered Moses uh, and the children of God through the Red Sea. Uh, all my life I've heard the thrilling stories, uh, how he fed them with manna, how he gave them water out of the rock. Uh, in all the miracles of the Old Testament. Uh, he said, all my life, you've thrilled me with those stories. Uh, but let me tell you something, Padre. Uh, I'm going to go in this church, uh, and I'm not going to come out of this church uh, until I have seen the Lord for myself. Uh, it's not enough to read about him. Uh, it's not enough to hear somebody preach about him. Uh, it's having a relationship with God yourself. Uh, and he showed up. Uh, and Isaiah said, I saw the Lord. Uh, and he was high. Uh, and lift it up. I'm not leaving till I've been blessed. God wants to give every one of you a supernatural encounter. If you never had one, <laughs> you can. You see, it's not enough talk about it. He wants you to go to heaven, yeah, but he wants you to experience him before you get there, all right? Now, let me just tell you this. You're not going to experience him near like you're going to experience him there because you're going to shed this dirty flesh one day and you'll be in his presence 100%. But he gives us a little bit of glory along the way. Praise God. And it's those times in my life that give me the foundational uh, assurance that when I'm not feeling anything, because I'm telling you, there's lots of times I'm not feeling nothing. There's lots of times I feel like, you know, I don't even know if, you know, don't even feel like a Christian. After I've cussed one of the members out in the church, I don't feel good about that. <laughs> See, I'm just getting your attention. I'm not like you, Suzanne. Amen. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. No, I didn't done that, but I'm just saying there's times that I don't feel like I feel like I feel what I feel right now. It used to be that song, I like to feel what I feel, what I feel, what I feel, what I feel right now. Well, y'all didn't get that, but anyhow. I like to feel what I feel when I feel what I feel right now. And I like to feel, but sometimes I don't feel it. Sometimes it's just as, it seems like my prayers are not even going past the lights. And there's, I mean, it doesn't even rise above my head. It doesn't seem like God is there. But I come to tell you, God is there every time. But it's in those times when he does, when I can feel him, that strengthens my inner man. And God's spirit strengthens me. His word strengthens me uh, the church strengthens me uh, and when I get in bad times he's always going to be there <clears throat> amen oh yeah see we can talk about him all day long but I want you to experience him a man who's traveled in a country climbed its mountains seen its cities crossed its rivers knows more about it and the man that only reads the map. Hello. Do you know you can literally starve to death 
at the best restaurant in America. I don't know where that's at. Never been to it, but anyhow. Yeah, I have. Charlie's chicken, baby. Amen. <laughs> Popeye's chicken. You know preachers like chicken. Come on now. I told you I only met one preacher in my life that didn't like chicken. One. That's it. He backslid, but I knew him. I knew him. <laughs> you can sit there literally all day. You know, a few months ago, some of y'all know, I went to D.C., and guess where I went to eat? I went to eat at Donald Trump's restaurant. It's not what it's called, but it's in his hotel. Man, I checked the menu out. Incidentally, somebody gave me the money because it was my birthday and was all alone by myself. So I said, we want, I want you to have this money, and I thank you. She's here today. Thank God bless you. Because I bought myself a nice steak. But, but, but they got steak there that's $65 an ounce. No, don't, don't, I didn't get that one. Okay, come on now. No. $65 an ounce. Man, what, what would it be like sitting there? I said, yeah, yeah, give, me, give, me, give me one of them 20 ounces right there. You, you do the math, okay? It's over $1,000 or more for a steak. But you know what? You can sit there looking at that $65 an ounce steak, okay? You can look at it all day long. You can look at it. You can smell it. Uh, you can touch it. Uh, but if you never taste it, uh, you'll never know what it'll do for you. And you can literally sit there and starve to death. Do you know there's people starving to death every week sitting in church? Uh, they hear about God. They sing about God. Uh, they, they listen, uh, but they're not listening like what they're supposed to with their spirit ear. Uh, and you know what? I know people that are dying in the church uh, and they're starving clean to death uh, but I got good news for you anytime you want Jesus has a table spread uh, where the saints of God are fed uh, he invites his chosen people to come and dine uh, he wants you to sit down and sup with him uh, and eat with him uh, and experience a relationship with him alone behold I stand at the door and I knock if any man open that door I'll come in and I'll sup with him I said, what's that mean? That means I'll sit down and eat supper with you. Man, ain't nothing like eating supper with somebody. Well, I eat dinner, preacher. Well, you go eat your little dinner. I'm going to eat my supper. By the way, Jesus didn't have the last dinner. He had the last supper, didn't he? So I'm scripturally right. And you're wrong again. And I'm getting cocky again. I can feel my wife telling me this. We, we've been married long enough. Thank you, baby. She pulls me back to reality. But, but <sighs> help me with that last thought I was thinking too because I just forgot it. Amen. <sighs> supper. Sit down and eat supper with him. You know, I, I, I don't, I, I'd like to be invited to the White House, Brother Brian. Next time. But I've never been invited. I, I'd like to go into the Oval Office. I'd like to take a picture of him like Elvis did. Y'all you know? never saw that, did you? Thank you. Thank you very much. You don't have to do all that. I know I don't have to do all that, but i got to do something to keep some of y'all awake. Amen. Amen. But it'd be different if I went in there and, and he said, wait, whoa, 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 oh, uh, uh, hey, hey, guy. Yeah, he calls me guy. I said, sir, they call me Mr. Parrish. Oh, yes, sir. I'm kidding, okay? I want you to stay over. What do you mean? I want you to stay and eat with me tonight. I don't know, I have to check my calendar. I got some things to do after a while. I got a little checklist I got to go to Walmart and get. You think I would tell the president that? Would you tell the president that? <laughs> I say, uh, yes, sir, Mr. Trump. <laughs> what we have in tonight, that 65 ounce or $65 an ounce steak, that's what I want. Amen. Uh, he said, you got it, man. 
I said, I don't want them McDonald hamburgers. You got them kids. I'm not a kid. I want something better than that. Amen. And, you know, would it be, wouldn't it? Now, what I'm saying is it would just, it's different than just going to see somebody. It's different than just, you know, walking in and shaking a hand and taking a picture. Uh, but when you sit down with them uh, and they undo their tie uh, and they take their coat off uh, and they sup with you, that's what Jesus is saying. Uh, I'm going to sit down and relax. Uh, I'm going to sit down and have some fellow ship with you if you'll just open the door most of us keep it shut because we got the Walmart to go to and we got this to do and we got that to do and we got you know places to go and people to see and God said I want you to experience me I gotta get me a new watch amen and let me just tell you this he's wherever and you know you've heard me say this before let me experience a little more water here first. Mm. Taste the Lord and see that he's good. Experience it. He'll slack your thirst. But you've heard me say, the problem we had back in the 90s was we thought we could go to a certain place and get it. And if we went to a certain place, that's where it was at. And then, you know, if we came back, we were supposed to come back and act just like they acted. Don't work like that. <laughs> Show that to me in the Bible, okay? They thought if they could sing the same song, if they could jerk the same kind of jerks they do, if they could, you know, uh, 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 just, just, just do what they did, then they could have revival in their own church. And, man, I tell you what, I was back in the 90s. I actually, I was a sectional presbyter back then. And there was a few churches I know of that, that split because of revival. We ain't got many people, but we got revival. No, you ain't got anything. Somebody say amen. If you ain't got people, somebody say amen. Uh, revivals when people are getting changed. Uh, it's not jerking and, and, and shaking and wiggling and jiggling and, and, and giggling. Uh, no, sir revival true revival uh, is when God shows up in he shows up in his presence uh, in your presence uh, and he strengthens your inner man uh, he gives you strength inside of you uh, come heaven hell high water uh, you can look the devil right between the eyes uh, and say I know in whom I have believed uh, and I am persuaded uh, you're not going to change my mind uh, I've got my mind made up and my foot's on the rock but you can't have that unless you experience him. I know what I'm talking about. Because, man, I faced everybody. I'm talking about it in the sense that <laughs> when I got saved, nobody wanted to be my friend anymore. But that's okay. My old mama didn't want to be my friend. Mom was here. I'd give her a piece of my mind right now. But she ain't here. <laughs> I'm kidding. I've already gave her a piece of my mind. She needs all she can get. Somebody say amen if you know her. But come on. That's my mama. Amen. I told my mom the other day, I said, somebody said you, that you were going crazy, Mom. She said, what? I said, don't worry about it, Mom. I said, you've always been crazy. She laughed. That's where I get a lot of it at, okay, I guess. That's what my wife says anyway. But anyhow, hello. Where was I? <laughs> huh? Okay, you don't know either. Amen. An experience knowing him and in knowing him in the inner man because you will have tough times. Oh, yeah. But here we go. Down here, looking for there, looking for here. Look, it's over here. And I call them revival chasers where they just run around looking for revival. Go run around looking, where's God at? Let me tell you something. You stand still long enough, God will show up where you're at, okay? The Bible said on the day of Pentecost, uh, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one place and one mind and one accord. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and cloven tongues of fire set upon each one of them. Uh, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Uh, you know what happened? Uh, they got still 
deal and they got it in one place uh, and it doesn't matter where it's at as long as you get together in unity uh, and begin to seek God God said I'll show up uh, you don't have to go down there you don't have to go up there you don't have to go anywhere uh, all you got to do is get along with God with some like minded people uh, because God is everywhere uh, he's everywhere he's anywhere uh, anytime any person wants to set their heart to see him uh, they can find him uh, if they'll look for him Yes, sir, revival's right here. Revival's right here. Do you know him in a relationship? You know, that's what's important. If you went to go see a doctor, and you know, and you sit down, and an old cool doctor told you, say, listen, here's the deal. You, you got six months to live, and uh, that's all I got to tell you. I got a patient right over here. Good luck, buddy. Huh? What did he just say, tell me? I've only got six months to live? And he's just going to nonchalantly say, hang in there. You're going to make it. Negative. You're going to treat me like a person. If you're the doctor, you're going to sit down and you're going to have a relationship. See what I'm saying? It's not some cold, dead doctor telling you that you're going to die with something. Uh, no, sir. I want you to sit down and explain to me a few things. Let me feel your heart, not just what you got in your mind. Uh, and tell me, uh, what can I do here? Uh, and spend a little time with me. Because if you don't, I'm coming up over the table. Because uh, I only got six months to live. So I ain't got nothing to live for. Amen. Uh, and I can, I can die. And I may die in jail. But that's okay. I'm only going to be there six months. Amen. What am I saying? There's the lack of a relationship. And man, that don't work for me. My wife and I have a relationship. Guess what? It's not a business relationship. It, 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 it's not just a financial relationship. Some people get in relationship because of finances. Man, I'm going to tell you what. My wife didn't get in this relationship because of finances. Because when we got married, she's the only one who had a job. <laughs> Amen. And not that I was lazy, but I was preaching. I was going to school, Bible college. She married me for my money. Be a good time to say amen, baby. <laughs> I look in the mirror and I, 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 I can tell you she didn't marry me for my dashing looks. <laughs> Kick a man when he's down, okay? <laughs> no. You see, see, we, we, it's not just an educational relationship. It's not just a recreational relationship. I just want somebody to go play golf with me, baby. Would you, you, would you go play some golf with me, baby? Amen. Will you, will you go to the lake with me? Will you go here and do this? You know, it's more than that. Now, all these things are true, but that's not the relationship that we have. It's not even the relationship I have with my friends, my neighbors. Huh. No, I mean, it's not that kind of relationship. It's a more personal relationship. I have a better relationship with her than I do with anybody on the earth. Why? Because she's my wife. And because of that, let me tell you what kind of relationship we have. We have a personal, in love, uh, uh, intimate, and know your business kind of relationship. Why? Because we got married and we committed ourselves uh, and all of a sudden she, she, she's not just my friend. Uh, she's not just the mother of my children. Uh, she's not just the grandmother of my grandkids. Uh, she's not just uh, my helpmeet. Uh, she's my bride. Uh, she's the one that I fell in love with and I'm still in love with her today. Uh, why? Because she's my wife. Can I tell you uh, that Jesus Christ says uh, that we're the apple of his eye. We're the bride of Christ. Uh, he didn't want to just have an educational relationship with us or a recreational relationship with us uh, or some kind of business relationship with us. Uh, no, sir. He wants to have a personal relationship and an intimate relationship with every one of us. Uh, we've got to know who we are uh, and we're the bride of Christ. He's a personal God with a personal touch. Makes all the difference in the world. Oh, let me close. Let me close. Here's my three points. That was my introduction. Here's my closing. Don't come back yet, though. 
Number one. See, here's the deal. Let me give you three keys. These are the three keys. You're going to have to write them down because I didn't put them on the PowerPoint this morning. The three keys that will get you where you need to be and experience with God. Number one. Number one, look for Jesus. Look for Jesus and you'll see him. Zacchaeus in the, in, in the sycamore tree, what was, he was looking for Jesus and he saw him. You know how I found out in life, whatever a person is looking for, that's usually what they'll see. Really, surely. I, I mean, I've used this example before, but, you know, you, know you, you, you might buy a car you never saw before. The minute you drive it home, you see 15, 20 of them go right by you. Because now you're looking for it. My, my son, a lot like my father, they're a lot alike in a lot of ways. And when it comes to hunting and fishing, old Simeon, his better half's here today. Both my son's better halves are here today. Praise God. Where are those clowns at? <laughs> Amen. Oh, Simeon, man, we'll be driving down the road. He said, Dad, stop. What? There's some deer. Wow, there is some deer over there. I don't know how you, you can see it. My dad used to drive down the road and say, he'd stop the pickup. What are you doing, Dad? He'd get out and say, look, there's some deer tracks. How in the world did he see deer tracks driving down a dirt road? Simeon's just like that. Dad, stop. There's, there's some turkey. Sure is. There's some turkey over there. You know why he sees turkey and deer and ducks on the pond? Every pond we go by, there's ducks. Look at the geese. Yeah, you're right. I didn't see that. You know why I didn't see it? Because I wasn't looking for it. See, he, he's looking for deer. He's looking for ducks. He's looking for whatever he's looking for. He sees it. Not Guy Parrish. Guy Parrish is looking for highway patrolman ahead. <laughs> Amen. And in my rear view, so I'm constantly scanning the horizon with my radar on. See, I'm looking for, and you, I see what I'm looking for. <laughs> Trust me. Amen. <laughs> I see them up close and personal sometimes. But nevertheless, uh, what you're looking for is what you see. If you're looking for Jesus, you'll see Jesus. If you're not looking for him, I'm telling you, you'll be like those that are on the road to Emmaus. They won't even know that you're walking with Jesus. Uh, but let me tell you something. Uh, if you'll start looking for Jesus, you say, where do I find Jesus? I'll tell you where you find Jesus. Uh, you find him in this book. Uh, you find him on your knees. Uh, you can find him every day in your life if you're just looking. You can see. See the fingerprints of God in your life. If you look. So look for Jesus, you'll see him. Number two, listen for Jesus and you'll hear him. Now that's the same principle. You hear what you're listening for. Classic example. You're watching your favorite football team play. While your wife is telling you all the things that need to be fixed in the house. And how the garbage is running over and how the dog needs to get to the vet and yada, yada, yada. You're saying, yeah? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you're really not listening to her. Because a little later she says, hey, what about those lights that need to be put up? What are you talking about? I told you when you was watching the football game. Oh, you weren't listening to her. You was listening to that referee say, first down and 15 yards. That's all you was listening to, and you was happy because that was your team. You had your mind set on that, and that's what you was listening to. Your wife told you something important, and then, you know, you, you tell her two days later, well, you know, we ought to do this. I told you that two days ago. Well, I don't remember you saying anything. You heard her, didn't you? But no, you weren't listening to her. You weren't, See what I'm saying? I'm telling you. God speaks to us if we're listening to him but if you're not listening it's going to go right over your head and number three lend to Jesus and he'll bless you look for Jesus and, he'll, and you'll see him listen for Jesus and you'll hear him and lend to Jesus and he'll bless you now notice I said lend because that's how the Bible puts it that Sarah lent 
Samuel to the Lord. And in every, every baby dedication that we do, we always lend them back to the Lord. Why? Because here's the deal. If you lend something to the Lord, he always gives it back. And he always gives it back in better shape than when you lent it. So if you'll lend him your life, if you'll lend him your song, if you'll lend him your hands, if you'll lend him your feet, if you'll lend him your life, your money, like the little lad that lent the lunch to Jesus. Uh, the Bible said he came and he lent his lunch to Jesus. Uh, and when it was all said and done and Jesus had fed 25,000 people uh, with a few fish and a few loaves, uh, it says that he had more left over than he ever had before he started with. Uh, and he had 12 baskets full of fragments. Uh, you see, the young man got back more than he ever put in. Uh, and I promise you, if you'll put more into what you're doing, uh, you'll get more out of it. Uh, if you'll put more in a relationship with God to get more out of it. Uh, if you'll put more relationship with your wife, uh, with your children, uh, with your friends, uh, if you'll put more in, you gonna get a whole lot more out. Uh, but most of all, if you'll lend your life to Jesus, he'll give it back with power. Amen. Oh, yeah. One day, uh, well, it was right at the 2000 when, you know, the 2000... Uh, what, what they used to call that? What was it called? Uh, Y2K, thank you. The Y2K deal. Now, I knew nothing was going to happen. I, I preached it. If y'all were there, if you're listening, what are we going to do? It's going to be Y2K. It's going to be over. What are you worried about? God's the one in control of this. So, so I said, but nothing's going to happen. It's just a scam to scare us. And I had to go preach a revival, not a preach a revival. I had to go preach a, what they used to call watch night service over in Fort Smith, Arkansas. Y2K night. The world's coming to an end at midnight. Got ready to go, and Shantae was about, I don't know. I don't know how old she was. She'd be what? Uh, I can't add it up in my head. She's born in 87, so you put the figures together. No. She's 13, thank you. 13-year-old. She started getting ready. I said, babe, what are you doing? She said, I'm going with you. I said, babe, I'm going to be staying all night. That's all right. I'm going to stay all night too. It's okay. You want to go with me? Let's go, baby. And so she got her stuff. We got in the car. We drive to Fort Smith. And it dawned on me. I said, baby. You, you, are you scared? She said, yeah, Daddy, I am. I said, of what? You know, Y2K, they're all talking about it. I'm scared. I said, babe, don't worry. You're with me now. Nothing's going to happen. And nothing did. But we was at church, and I'm sitting on the front row, me and my daughter. And they took up an offering. And the offering came by, and I reached in my pocket, and I got a dollar out. I put it in the, in, in, the, in the bucket or whatever it was, the bag. And it went on. Shante said, Daddy. I said, what, baby? Did you just give a dollar? I said, yeah, baby, I just gave a dollar. Well, I thought you preached against giving a dollar. Hmm, Interesting. I said, baby, here's the deal. See, I'm just trying to be an example. Because you see, that offering they're taking up, I'm going to get it back. It's for us. It's for me, the evangelist. So I gave a dollar. She looked at me and said, well, you did. I said, the more you get. That's what I said. I said, baby, I said, the more you give, the more you get. I was just trying to be funny. I don't mean that. You know I'm not a materialistic preacher or one of those name and claim it guys. I'm just saying. The, but, but it is true in a spiritual sense. And I said, the more you give, the more you get. The more you lend, the more God gives it back to you. She looked at me and said, you sure didn't give very much then. I said, you got a point there. And that's the problem we've got. We're not giving all. Come back to instruments. We're just not 
giving all we can. We're holding back. We're holding back. We wonder why we don't have that relationship with God. It makes all the difference in the world. God wants you to have a supernatural encounter with him. He wants you to sit down and sup with him. He wants you to experience him. He wants you to taste the Lord and see that he is good. He wants you to experience the promises of this book. Uh, he wants you to experience the promises of power in your hour of temptation. Uh, he wants you to know him and the power of his resurrection. Uh, and yeah, when it comes time for dying uh, and everybody's going to come to that time, uh, if you know him now, you're going to know him then. Uh, and it won't be a doubt or are depressant uh, you'll forever be with the Lord uh, and brother I want you to know it doesn't get any better than that uh, there's nothing 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 that shall be able to conquer you uh, if you are close to him amen let me close with this years ago there was a there was a great orator he had oratory abilities they said he spoke with a silver tongue that he could make the ordinary extraordinary. Just the way that he could reflect his voice and speak. Some people are like that. Some people know how to do it. He did. He would literally electrify his audiences. He would read Shakespearean literature like they'd never heard before. They heard poems read from the great poets, but never, never like they heard when he spoke the poem. He would go to city after city, became very famous of his time. The man with the silver tongue. One particular city he went to, there was a big crowd there. When he was through, which was his custom, his very last thing that he would quote, he didn't do it by note. He did it by memory. He would quote the 23rd Psalm. He quoted the 23rd Psalm in such excellent way, in such a splendid, superior way than just any mortal man could. And when he was done, the people rose to their feet. They gave him a standing ovation. They had never heard the 23rd Psalm quite like that. He felt good. Well, all of a sudden, an elderly gentleman got up out of the crowd while everyone was clapping and everyone was applauding. He walked up on stage. He whispered to the famous man, actually he was an actor of his day. And he said, could I say something? And just out of cur uh, courtesy, he says, yes, sir, you can say something. And everybody sat there and looked at him. Many recognized him. He was an old retired preacher from the community. Didn't have a lot of education. Never had a lot of flamboyance at all, or none at all, I should say. But that day he got up and he started quoting the 23rd Psalm. But as he quoted the 23rd Psalm, men's hearts began to burn. People began to cry. And when he got through with it, people were on their knees. And they were worshiping God, not a man. The movie actor, or the, the, the actor, not movie actors before movies, but, but the actor said to him, said, Sir, I got a question. When I quoted the 23rd Psalm, these people stood and applauded me, gave me a standing ovation. But yet when you quoted the 23rd Psalm, their hearts burn within them. Their lives are broken, and they're worshiping God. What's the secret? He said, sir, I've got to be honest with you. My own heart burned within me. How do you do it? What's the secret? And the old preacher said, sir, there's no secret at all. 
He said the only difference between you and I, we quoted the same psalm, but the difference is this. Is, Sir, you know the psalm. I know the shepherd. Amen. You know the psalm by memory. You can quote it verbatim. You can quote it with reflection. But I know the shepherd. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. You see, people can feel the heart of God. And it makes a difference. It's not enough to know this book. you got to know the one that wrote the book. It's not enough to know the law. Ask Paul. you got to know the law giver. It's not enough just to know what it says in the New Testament and all the things that go with it. Uh, you've got to know the one that wrote the New Testament uh, and I can tell you in the beginning was the Word uh, and the Word was with God and the Word was God the same was in the beginning with God and all things were made by Him He is the Word of the living God so experience Him don't just have a Sunday morning experience experience Him in your life this week as you seek Him you'll find Him as you look for Him, you'll see Him. As you listen for Him, you'll hear Him. As, as you lend your life to Him, you'll get it back. And it'll be better. Father, in Jesus' name.